Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. I'm back for another video for you. And in this video, I want to talk about egg cartons, or rather, why we shouldn't use egg cartons. I think we all know we shouldn't use egg cartons, but why exactly? Why aren't egg cartons a good idea to treat your room? In my opinion, it comes down to three basic concepts that I want to go through with you today. They're great to revisit some of the, the kind of fundamentals of acoustics and how sound works and just understanding how sound interacts with objects in a room. And in that context, we can understand why egg cartons don't really make any sense. But before I do that, quickly, if you are in the process of treating your home studio and you want to understand what the big picture is of what you're trying to do, what the steps are that you need to take in order to treat your home studio, I want you to download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. It's my five steps to treat your studio and get it to translate. It basically covers the major points that in my opinion, you should go through, you should focus on in order to actually get results from your home studio. So we're talking how to look at the room, how to think about the empty room, how to think about setting up your desk, your speakers, how to think about treatment, pores absorption versus resonance absorption, how to think about integrating a subwoofer, when to think about measurements, speaker decoupling, it's all in there prioritized and also sorted for you so you know what to focus on at what step of the process. So if you are in the middle of treating your room or you're about to get on that journey of treating your room, make sure you download my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description so you know what it is that you should be focusing on. So with that, let's start talking about egg cartons. And maybe the first thing to do is to just kind of think about what can we expect them to do in the first place, because they're not really going to absorb sound. I think we can all be certain of that. So what remains is diffusion, I guess. <laughs> so let's think about egg cartons in the context of diffusion. And in that context, the first major thing we probably look at or we kind of think about when we look at these egg cartons are their shape. And when we're talking about the shape, it's pretty obvious that egg cartons are a very regular shape. And that's the main issue, right? So why is this an issue? Well, proper diffusers are designed in a way that the reflected sound or rather the wave fronts of the reflected sound interferes with each other. So the, the, the different wave fronts, they interfere with each other. And that's what causes the diffusion, what leads to diffusion or scattering. And that only really works when that shape is designed in such a way that it leads to that interference of the reflected sound waves of the wavefronts that get reflected. If that isn't the case, sure, it does reflect sound, but those wavefronts don't properly interfere in a, in a way that you actually get diffusion, right? So. In, in principle, we can say that if the shape is too regular, or rather, if it is not built in a way that it leads to diffusion, then it probably won't do that. And that's definitely the case with egg cartons. Now, there are regular shapes that do diffuse or scatter sound. One of them is a polycylindrical shape. Yeah, so that's what you kind of see here, what I'm attempting to do with this thing right here. There are also kind of waveform shaped diffusers, but they are still very much calculated in order for that diffusion to work properly. And so if the shape is too regular, we don't actually get any interference from the reflected sound field from the reflected wave fronts. And so you don't get diffusion. And it's the same problem, for example, with bookshelves, right? Question that we kind of stumble across all the time. Is it good enough to just put kind of a bookshelf in the back of the room? and expect that to actually diffuse sound. In practice, it will probably do a tiny amount of scattering, but 
to an extent that it's basically useless. Yeah, so no bookshelves don't properly diffuse sound. And in this case, egg cartons don't do that either. So that's the pro first problem. So the second part that we need to look at is the size of the structure, right? So we looked at the shape before and now we're looking at the size because the size lets us deduce in what, what frequency bandwidth we, actually, we could actually expect some diffusion to happen. And this is based on the simple principle that sound waves see objects that are roughly the size of their wavelength. I made another video about this that you can check out in the card right now, which because it's a really good way to quickly estimate whether a certain object in your room, maybe a pillar, maybe a kind of a ceiling beam or some cubby somewhere, how that actually affects the sound in the room. But when we're talking about diffusion and in particular Schroeder diffusers, what we usually look at is the, the well depth and the well width. Those give us the boundaries, roughly speaking, of the bandwidth that actually gets diffused. And the well depth relates to the lower boundary and the well width relates to the upper boundary. Okay, so that's kind of gives us the bracket in which the diffusion works. Now with egg cartons, how deep are they? Maybe eight centimeters. So that would mean that diffusion could start at maybe two kilohertz. And then the well width of an egg carton is maybe five centimeters. So that gives us an upper limit of maybe seven kilohertz. Okay, so if this were the right shape, then this would work roughly in the bandwidth between about two and seven kilohertz. Of course, it's not the right shape, so this doesn't actually work, but at least that gives us kind of an idea of how limited it is in terms of frequency. Now, this doesn't make it completely useless. In fact, the diffusers, where are they? The diffusers that you see on my panels work in roughly the same bandwidth, but they are obviously combined with absorption. And also the shape actually works. So that's what makes the big difference there. So yes, in theory, if they were the right shape, egg carton sized diffusers could be a tool that is reasonable to look at. Let's just to, to say it like that, yeah. But in practice, obviously, because they aren't the right shape, none of this makes any difference because they don't actually work. And that brings me to point number three, and that really puts the nail in the coffin with egg cartons as diffusers. And that is the hardness of the material, if you will, right? So diffusers really need to be built out of a material that is absolutely hard to sound. We need the sound to reflect off of the surface 100%. We want these to, we want, we don't want sound to penetrate or to pass the material in any way because we need that reflected sound, that reflected sound front or the different sound fronts from the different surfaces to then interfere to give us diffusion. So if sound doesn't reflect properly off the surface, we can't really expect any diffusion to work. And that's why egg cartons, which are made out of carton, don't really work because we need, because sound is just going to pass through the material to a large extent, especially at the lower frequencies. It might be hard enough at the upper end to reflect some energy, but in general, this, the material just isn't right. It's not hard enough in order for the sound to be reflected properly. Okay, so in summary, that's really it, right? It's those three points. The shape isn't right. The dimensions potentially could be right if the shape were right <laughs> to do something somewhat useful but it's not going to because the shape isn't right. And then finally, the materials just aren't right to actually reflect any sound. And that's why egg cartons don't do anything useful for us in terms of treating our room. Okay, I hope you learned something here. Again, you can apply these same principles to just about anything when you're thinking about how does it interact with sound. And that's why I wanted to go through this little exercise with you to kind of give you an insight on, on in how to think about how sound interacts with different objects. But with that, let's get back to making music. 
and tr learning to trust our ears because that's what it's all about. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.